Hello and welcome to Blender Bite Size. In this video, I'll be showing you how to make this material procedurally in Blender. Feeling lazy? You can support this channel and skip the hard work by grabbing the blend file for this material from Gumroad for just a pound. Feeling flush? Feel free to throw some of that coin my way using the coffee link in the description below the video. Just before I start this one, I just wanted to thank everyone that subscribed to the channel so far. I've managed to get over a thousand subscribers. That's awesome. Please do also make sure to go and watch the entire playlist. Even if you just came here for the one material, it's going to help bump my watch hours and I would very much appreciate it. Okay, anyway, let's get into this particular material. So I've already loaded my object. I'm in the shading tab or viewport and I'm going to enable viewport shading. Now we don't need the principal shader, so we're going to delete that and we're going to start by adding a glass shader. So press shift A and search for the glass shader. We're going to plug that into the surface. That's going to become the main part of um, our design. But we've got a whole bunch of stuff to put in here to create the multicolored effect. So we're going to start by searching for a volume scatter and a volume absorption. Uh, there we go. Now, because I've got the Node Wrangler add-on enabled, I can press Control Shift on my keyboard and right click and drag to connect those two with a mix shader. That I'm going to plug into the volume slot on the material output. Now, just a reminder, as always, I'm using the Cycles um, render engine. So I'll just select Cycles here. doesn't really make a huge difference. You can just leave it set as all, but it's just a thing in case you want to use it. Right, now we need to start doing some things. So we're going to add a math node. And we're going to set that to multiply add. We're going to set the multiplier to 35 and the addend to minus 10. Now we need to generate a value. So for that, we're going to add a color ramp and a Musgrave texture. Connect the Musgrave texture to the color ramp and connect the color output from the color ramp to the value in the math node. And then connect this to the factor in the mix shader and also to the density in the volume scatter. So you can see things are already happening for us. Now on the color ramp, we're going to set the interpolation to B spline. And we're going to drag that white value all the, way, all the way across to point 0.1 on the position. You can always just click in there and type it in if you wanted to. On the Musgrave texture, we're going to set that to 7.5 on the scale, 5 on the detail, and 0 on the other two. Now, if I've got this node selected again, because I've got the node wrangler enabled, I can press Control H and hide all of the unused values. It's just a way of tidying up um, your nodes as you work. There's a little bonus tip for you. Now, I want to basically generate this according to the object um, coordinates. So we're going to select the Musgrove value and press Control T to add a texture coordinate and a mapping node. Mapping node will select and press Control H again just to sort of drop it down so it takes up less space. And we're going to connect the object value from the texture coordinate to the mapping node. Then to muck up this, we're going to add a noise texture. Set the scale to one, detail to one, roughness to 0.25 and leave the distortion as zero. Control H again to drop those options. Okay, so that's the top row. 
Now we need another mapping node. So Shift D to duplicate, Control H to expand that. We're going to plug the object value into the vector, the rotation, and the scale. And then we're going to plug this into the color value of the volume absorption. We've already got color coming through, but what we're going to do is, oh, is grab ourselves a color ramp and chuck it just after the mapping node. Set the value, uh, sorry, the color mode to HSL and the color interpolation to far. Separate out the color points completely and set both to value of red. So value one, saturation of one. And what that will do is give you a full spectrum rainbow spreading, beneath, uh, spreading between the two. Now we're going to duplicate this multiply add and plug it into the density of the volume absorption. Set the value to two, the multiplier to 7.4 and the addend to minus 12. And you can see the kind of changes that that makes. So if you want to sort of play around with those values and get something else, you are entirely welcome. Now on the volume scatter, we're going to change that to 0 0.06. The roughness on the glass, we're going to change to 0.1 and change the distribution to GGX. And I think that should be about it. Uh, so let's squish up all of these. So that we can get everything a bit neater. Now, of course, you can change the index of refraction value to give you different effects, but I'm going to leave it at about 1.4. Oops, I've got an extra mapping node there that I didn't want. And I think that should be about it. Now I've um, collapsed the texture coordinate node and I'm just going to select with the eyedropper the icosphere so that we know what object we're taking as the texture coordinate. And that is about it. So let's bring those together. And there we go, there's that. So. We've got our glass shape and we've got everything set. So basically this is controlling the color for the volume stuff and this is controlling the glass. Now it does um, look slightly different with different objects. So let me just hide the icosphere and I will load up a Suzanne. add a subdivision surface modifier and shade smooth then apply that and you can see it's very different when it gets applied to the Suzanne shader and it does really depend on the thickness of, and uh, thickness of the object that you're using so you will get very different looks but it's a cool shader nonetheless so let's render those out and see how we get on. So I'm first going to move old Suzanne around a bit. And let's re-bring in the icosphere. Now you notice with um, old what's the face Suzanne the monkey, that the um, material is actually changing based on 
where the sphere is and that's because here in the texture coordinate we're mapping it to the circle uh, sphere so what I'm going to do is actually just change that over and you'll see that it's changed back now because I'm using the exact same material it's now switched that over so I'll just create a new material with this so copy and then change this back to the icosphere so we're getting both now so let's check and select the icosphere and make sure that we selected that there we go okay so make sure you're mapping the right thing to the right object um, so I am using cycles like I said 256 samples denoising I've only got minimal light path setting and that's with the basic direct light setup and I've started using tiling recently at 256 because I find it shaves off, off about 25% of the render time. So that's useful to know. So let's look and see how this comes out. And there we go, just 23 seconds and we've got fully rendered um, Suzanne and Sphere. And she's got all the colour shading going on and we've even got her reflection in the glass sphere. So I hope you've enjoyed that video and we'll give it a thumbs up. Uh, in the meantime, thanks for watching. And if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. If there's any material suggestions, please feel free to reach out and leave comments below the videos wherever you're watching. And of course, do check back and watch the other videos as well. Okay, thanks for watching. Bye for now. Music